Hey everyone, this is Kristen, and today's the day. I have been so excited about today. It's the second part of our two-part collab with the ever-so-talented Miss Karen Campbell. Now, if you saw last week's video, we began backgrounds for the other to complete. And yes, I already opened mine. I was completely impatient, you know, so there. So I opened the package already. And if you saw it last week, you will have seen Karen create this beautiful background. Check out this canvas. It is a nine by 12. Of course, we can put it any way we want. Not exactly sure how I'm gonna do it, but I love all of these luscious layers. Look at all of that detail. Love the black. I really love the pops of black and this kind of chicken wire stencil. Absolutely love it. So I can say already there is an inherent challenge here, and that is how do we work with such a bold color palette? And what can I do so that I don't cover it all up? Because of course it's a collab, right? I don't want to cover up all of this beautiful beginning. So I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to handle that, but I have come up with a few options. First of all, I know I want to create a girl, a figure, something on top. And the challenge is if I do something on top, like draw directly or paint directly on the canvas, if there's anything I don't like, I can't start over, right? I don't wanna wipe it away. I don't wanna gesso over it. So, so I have another option. What if I were to paint or draw or sketch separately and then collage on top of it? That can certainly take away that fear of messing anything up, right? But I'm not really feeling that either because I do love it when artwork is completely seamless. So in order to do that, I wanna do something specifically on top, directly on the surface. And I think I kind of came up with an idea to work around the fear of messing anything up on the surface. And that is to use oil pastels. Now I've been really digging oil pastels lately. They can be layered, blended together, and fingers crossed, if I make a mark that I don't like, I can just wipe it away. So that's what's happening. So we've got the challenge of the bold color palette, the challenge of not wanting to mess it up, because again, it's Karen's beautiful work. I wanna keep it intact, right? And then, I'm so excited about this. Thank you, Karen. Check this out. She sent me one of her latest books. You know, she has created, I think she's working on her 10th book. How amazing is that? And she's been published in art journaling and similar magazines for literally years. So I'm sure you've seen her work. I can't wait to take a deep dive into this. Hello, Karen. I cannot wait to check this out more fully, but oh, I love that. Hello. But here is my official challenge from Karen, and that is to incorporate something sparkly. So I'm all in for that. Challenge accepted. I love myself some sparkle. So we have something sparkly. Thank you for the book. We have this beautiful beginning that I don't wanna mess up. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using oil pastels to create some sort of figure and complete this canvas. So that's what's happening right now. Of course, if you haven't already seen Karen's video, check that out at the end. There will be a link there so that you can see how she completed the background that I started for her. I hope you enjoy it. I'm really looking forward to it. And as always, thanks for coming along. Today I thought I'd do something a little different and share with you some of my thoughts during bits and pieces of the process. So the first thing I'm determining is where to put the face I wanna make. And right there, perfect spot. Then I'm going to take a book and put it in the divot of the canvas so it gives me a really sturdy surface to work on top of. Now the oil pastels, I'm in love. They're rich creamy. They remind me of playing with lipsticks. And if you add layer upon layer and color upon color and blend as you go, they can give almost an ethereal look to whatever you may be making. So we're going to start here. And by the way, I'm doing this whole thing with my fingertips. So we're going to begin with the eyes. We'll add the soft colors first and start blending. We'll see where she takes us. On a treasure hunt I long for something new Have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance? Oh, I wish it was me
I'm pulling out the gesso. I feel like I need just a little bit of that bright white to make the colors, especially in the eyes, pop. So I'll add just a little bit of gesso with my fingertips, I'll even dilute it with water, and add some hints of that color on the eyes, on the nose, and on the bridge of the nose only. And now the real layering process begins. And let me tell you, lots of layers. But my only intention is to create depth by using a variety of colors on each of the facial features. So for the cheeks, I've got more than one pink. And for the eyes, I'm throwing all those greens I have on the canvas. I'll start small by using lighter, softer colors first. And then I'll build on top of those with the deeper, richer colors. This way, our shading has already been started. I'm adding bright white to the corners of the eyes. This will give me the approximate size and shape of the eye to come. And then more depth and shading with warm colors under and above the eyes, such as yellow and a deep ochre. From there, the deep, rich blacks will come, and that will really give me the shape of the eye in the end. I'm going to be blending it and blending it into the canvas so that she has almost a smoky eye shadow and a mysterious look about her. So we'll put on some music now, we'll continue to watch her emerge, and I'll come back shortly with the mistake I made that changed the course of the canvas.
Okay, we've been blending our little heart out and our girl is emerging through the layers. But here we come to the mistake that changed the course of the canvas. As you can see, I rubbed her poor little cheek raw and there was nothing I could do to change it. I tried to add more gesso, that wasn't working. I tried to layer on more oil pastels, not happening. So I decided if I couldn't keep it clean, I'm going to distress it. So I pulled out the sandpaper and started scraping away at those surface layers. And when I did, I loved it. I love seeing pieces of the canvas poke through and I love the kind of gritty, grungy quality that it gave. So I started doing more of the same. I distressed more of the cheek. I took it up to the top portion of the canvas and started to distress that. And my mind about my original concept really started to change then. I no longer wanted it as smooth as I thought I did, but rather I wanted it gritty and grungy. I wanted scratches and scrapes to show through, and I wanted her to really blend into the canvas, to kind of become one with the background, so you really couldn't tell where one stopped and the other started. And then it occurred to me that I had the perfect little shiny, sparkly thing in my stash that went completely in the direction of where she's looking. Everything changed from there. Sailors passing on the street, are you ready? Ships are filling up fast, are you ready?
Birds are filling up the sky. Are you willing to try? Why? Sing along as they hum and be fulfilled. Many more will come. Many more. Keep it steady. We will be the confetti. If we fail, we just reboot. Grass is green around the side. Are you ready? Song to sing no more. Goodbye, blame. Weights can't lift you up, but you can find a way to drop them. Can you feel the wind? Say you do. It's how it all begins. Then comes reason, then purpose. Well, you will find your way. In the meantime. May the sun bless you with its rays. It's how we learn. It has to hurt. It has to hurt. Every single turn. Don't beg your pardon. You're not someone's victim. It has to hurt. It has to hurt.
We're now coming to the end of the process and I'm just adding some final details. We've applied liquid glitter to the edges of the canvas and that's sparkly but not the shiniest thing to come. And right now I'm making hash marks by digging into that shadowy corner of oil pastel with a craft knife. It indicates the passage of time. Who knows how long she's been hiding in that background. And now the shiniest part yet and that is little self-adhesive mirrors. She's kind of looking up and into them, almost in a moment of self-reflection, which is what I titled this. So, self-reflection, begun by Karen Campbell and finished by me, my fingertips, and a whole bunch of oil pastels. Thanks, guys, for coming along on this collaboration. I've had so much fun with you all, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.